Through the late 90s and early 2000s, Sony surged to the top of the gaming industry with the PlayStation and PlayStation 2, solidifying their position in the upper echelons of the entertainment business where they already held ground through their movie, television, and music production studios as well as their line of home entertainment products. In the process of changing the ways in which consumers were entertained, Sony had a vision of bringing the future of entertainment not just into homes, but into the world of retail, hoping to change the mall experience as we knew it. This is Metreon, Sony's failed mall of the future. Kind of like uh, sort of techno suburbia, really. I mean, you uh, have all the technology here. It is also about creating relationships. From its gaming arcade to the latest in computer technology, the house rule here is hands on. The Sony Metreon opened its doors on June 16, 1999 on the corner of Market and 4th Street in downtown San Francisco, California, a city going through its own late 90s tech boom. The original concept for the Metreon revolved around creating a sophisticated balance between the ordinary retail experience and immersive, interactive entertainment for all ages. It goes without saying though that the idea of merging retail and gimmicky attractions was far from new, especially at the time. The Mall of America featured its own indoor theme park, while Universal Studios opened its themed CityWalk plazas as retail and entertainment centers outside of their main parks. Disney also opened Disney Quest, its own chain of small indoor theme parks with some retail and restaurant elements inside of it. And let's not even get started with these theme restaurants like Chuck E. Cheese's all the way up to WWF New York, which were becoming commonplace especially in larger cities. Sony's vision, however, at least in the beginning, was very distinct. In fact, Sony didn't even like the term mall, despite its project basically being one. Rather, they opted for the term Urban Entertainment Center, designating former Sony Senior Vice President Trevor Bryant as the establishment's creative director. Metreon was slated to be San Francisco's tech and entertainment metropolis, with Sony and its products essentially serving as ambassadors to the future. Upon opening, the four-story, 350,000 square foot, $85 million entertainment complex featured several attractions including a children's play area themed after Maurice Sendak's Where the Wild Things Are, designed with the help of Sendak himself, an educational animatronic showcase and 3D film experience based on David McCulley's book The Way Things Work, the quote-unquote airtight garage, which was an arcade that featured all original games based on the airtight garage graphic novel by Gene Mobius Girard. The most popular game they probably had in there was Hyper Bowl, a 3D bowling game set on San Francisco city streets. Oh yeah, and they also had a PlayStation Store, the first and only one in the world, which sold Sony gaming products and allowed customers to play games in store, an experience I was glad enough to have for myself. They also had one-of-a-kind shops like Microsoft SF and the Discovery Channel store, not to mention various other shops, restaurants, its own event center, and a full-size Sony theater, which would later be owned and operated by AMC, featuring the largest IMAX screen of its time. At first glance, this idea of a futuristic tech-centric entertainment and shopping metropolis seemed outstanding. You didn't need to pay anything to enter, and there was lots to experience and interact with inside. There were good places to eat, unique shops to visit, and a number of mini Disneyland-esque attractions to immerse yourself in. In fact, they even had plans to expand, with locations ready to sprout from Japan and Berlin. However, it didn't take long for reality to set in, and for the Sony Metreon to fall from grace almost as fast as it gained ground. By the summer of 2001, less than two years into the Metreon's life, the Way Things Work exhibit was closed for good, followed by the Microsoft Store later that year. The Discovery Channel pulled out their store, citing increasingly poor sales in 2003. And in 2004, after switching to a limited opening schedule, the Where the Wild Things Are play area would finally be shut down as well. Though Sony refused to acknowledge the downfall of their futuristic idea, the increasing dreariness of Metreon was undeniable. 2004 saw the introduction of The Walk of Game, this cool thing that featured Hollywood-esque tiles honoring influential game characters, with Sony even holding special Walk of Game event ceremonies in 2004 and 2005. However, the added experience didn't do much to change the eventual fate of the entertainment center. After nearly half a decade of rumors, in February of 2006, Sony finally made the move to sell off their property, reaching a reported $70 million deal with the Westfield Group, 
which had already obtained ownership and began renovations to the nine-story Westfield San Francisco Center Mall just blocks away. By 2007, after an identity crisis that saw all of Gene Gerard's airtight garage arcade games disappear, with the exception of Hyper Bowl, Metreon's arcade had been more or less modernized, sporting newer games and tons of claw machines, all of which would be removed less than a couple years later. After an extended presence in the mall, in 2009, Sony finally removed its PlayStation and Sony-style stores, finally closing the coffin on a technological and marketing dream that simply failed to meet its full potential. Today, its movie theater, a couple of eateries, and a tiny Metreon sign are all that remain of what once was. Since Sony's departure, the Metreon simply became another food-centric mall with a theater and a target on top nearly indistinguishable from any other North American mall from the inside. Still, it begs the question, what went wrong with Metreon? There are honestly quite a few factors that led to Metreon's downfall, some being Sony's fault and some being just pure bad luck. The first fault Sony had in the Metreon's downfall was probably its decision to charge guests for pretty much all of its attractions. Now, obviously they had to make money in order to make back at least part of their investment, but gating off and charging for attractions that were supposed to give the mall its life ended up working in the opposite way. It also didn't help that Sony began to reportedly cut the Metreon's budget a mere six months into the operation. Another factor that likely led to the Metreon's demise was probably a lack of a solid target audience. Younger audiences that came for the Metreon's attractions likely weren't the same people who cared much for high-end retail and vice versa. And if you were a parent with children, you probably ended up spending more money on food, attractions, and probably a movie. Hell, the proceeds of the theater didn't even really touch Sony's pockets since it was owned by Lowe's and later AMC. In all, the Sony Metreon was pretty much a flop. Yeah, it would have been great, especially today, to have a high-end wonderland to visit and try out all sorts of tech in, especially in a city like San Francisco. However, in practice, that dream didn't just come to fruition, at least the way that Sony and its directors had once envisioned. We can look back at the Metreon and think of it as just another one of those dot-com era ideas that seemed cool at the time but actually wasn't practical at all, but it also leaves much to the imagination. Maybe Metreon was just too ahead of its time, and with the right management and funding and maybe a few years later into the future, it could have succeeded. Nevertheless, at least they have a coffee-serving robot. This has been a Lost Saint video. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.